reflective conversation as part of your advanced facilitation techniques. I'm going to explain to you how to engage people with En-ROADS in ways that actually changes their thinking in really deep, profound ways and changes their acting and behavior in the real world. This is one of the three legs of the stool for learning in complex systems. The other two, vision, systems thinking, reflective conversation. I'm going to talk about why it's so incredibly important, how to think about it, and third, how to implement these ideas in a real En-ROADS engagement. Here we go. So here's the problem we're trying to address. John Sturman, our team member from MIT Sloan's Sustainability Initiative, said it best. He says it like this. Research shows that showing people research doesn't work. Research shows that showing people research doesn't work. And people like us who love simulations often believe otherwise. Well, I explained the insight accurately. Of course they understand what I meant. No, that's not how it works. So what works, we find, is that you're helping people surface their assumptions, even know that they have assumptions, see those assumptions, test them against a simulator, and if needed, improve them. Overall, your job is to help people learn on their own terms. Help people learn for themselves. That's what we're doing. One important concept here is mental models. We argue that all decisions are made with models. 99% of them are made with the models between our ears, what we call mental models. These are the maps of causality, cause and effect, our understanding of how complex systems or any systems behave over time, particularly here as it relates to how we would forecast how these systems might play out into the future. For example, imagine that there was a zero carbon energy supply invented say next week, thorium fission or something like that. Now think in your head, what might happen if that invention were made, what would happen to overall temperature around the world by 2060? So think for a second. What you're doing right now is you are simulating your mental model about how this energy carbon climate system works. That's what I mean by mental model. Now, it goes deeper than that even. Note that mental models also shape what we're even able to perceive, what we're open to seeing in the world. As Rumi says, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. We see the world as limited by what our mental models are open to bringing in. Even more of a reason to question them as we try to come up with solutions to pressing challenges. Now, extensive research into mental models has revealed how incredibly bad they are at handling the dynamics of complex systems, like the climate, where cause and effect are distant in time and in space. They're really bad at slow accumulations, like CO2 in the atmosphere. They're really bad at feedback loops say like economies of scale or the price demand uh, dynamic feedback loop or non-linearities about like many features of the climate system. Now, these are many of the things that are covered in the En-ROADS dynamics course. So our mental models are bad at it, but the computer models, well, our model En-ROADS isn't perfect, but it's designed to be better than our mental model at handling many of those dynamics. So we use En-ROADS and we look for opportunities to supplement and improve people's mental models. That's what we're doing. We're looking for opportunities to supplement and improve people's mental models. So what can you do when you're sitting there with somebody in En-ROADS or in a workshop or in a game? The most concrete thing you can do to surface and test and improve mental models is to help people by asking them 
to simulate their mental models before you move a slider. Don't just move it and show the result. So you're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna move this new zero carbon switch. What do you think is gonna happen to temperature by 2100? And ask them to whisper it to themselves if it's a sensitive moment, write it on a piece of paper, turn to the person next to them and say what that number is, write it into poll, a poll online if you're doing this online. Better yet, ask them to reveal why. Talk to the person about why you think that's the case. Why do you think temperature would go down one degree? Well, we'd have no more coal and no more gas and it would have a huge impact. Have people say what they think is going on in the system. Now, when you notice that gap, when you notice that it doesn't match your understanding of the system, don't quickly correct them. Spend a little time in detective mode. Try to figure out how do they see the world? Because in this workshop and as things perhaps go on with their engagement with them, it's gonna be so helpful to understand their mental model and everybody's mental model about this complex system. Get really curious. Then you have the payoff moment of, well, many people think the world works like this, that we would totally eliminate coal or whatever, and that would have a huge effect. And yet here is what we understand from running the model and what's going on in the system. I'm gonna show you the graphs that illustrate that there are these delays, there are the nonlinearities, there's a feedback process with price and demand feedback loop that is really important. That way you're helping people learn on their own terms in the context of how they think about the system. You're not just sending your insights given how you see the system. Now, a really powerful way to make this happen, of course, is to walk your talk. And to walk your talk, you will, along the way, talk about your own learnings. You will talk about the own, your own gaps in your mental models, things that you don't understand or didn't understand, or if you look and see a surprise, talk about it that way. You need to demonstrate that kind of openness to seeing your own assumptions and testing your assumptions and changing your assumptions. That will create the kind of environment where everybody feels safe to do so themselves. The second way to implement this reflective conversation idea. The way to do this is to create and invite people into your virtual world. This virtual world, of course, is this simulated scenarios in En-ROADS. Make it a kind of a what if, somewhat playful place where you can conduct experiments in the simulator that help people understand and improve their mental models. And sometimes that could even be with impractical tests. Don't think of this like a forecast modeling exercise. You're not just trying to predict the future. You're pushing on this system and seeing if you can learn something about how the system behaves. You can create very impractical tests of the model. I remember sitting with a reporter from the New York Times across the street from their offices in an Italian restaurant, and he wanted to create a scenario where emissions would go really close to zero in like 10 years. Now, this wasn't something he was just trying to say was really going to happen, but it could reveal something about how the carbon cycle would behave how the climate would behave, how sea level rise would behave. It was a what if playful kind of test. So have a certain le amount of levity as you invite people to play with you with this simulator in this virtual world. The third way to implement reflective conversation, get yourself out of the way. The architect and thinker Bucky Fuller said it best. If you want to teach people a new way of thinking, don't bother trying to teach them. Instead, give them the tool. Give them a tool, the use of which will lead to new ways of thinking. That's what you're doing with En-ROADS. You're not teaching them stuff. You're not telling them stuff. You are mediating an interaction between a person their mental model and En-ROADS and helping them get the most 
out of that experience. And along the way, things will come up. People will be disappointed. They will think, oh, I'm frustrated that this isn't showing up. The, my solution isn't showing up as big as, it, as I want it to be. And instead of sitting with that experience, sometimes people will turn on you and they'll all try to kind of like bait you in different ways. You're not taking the bait. You're just helping people have the experience with this grounded science. Um, and other times they may have other kind of frustrations like, oh, it's hopeless. We're never going to do it. Your job isn't necessarily to say, oh, rah, rah, we can do it. Don't give up hope. That's not for you to do. Ideally, maybe someone else in the workshop, you're going to set them up to have that kind of interaction. Ironically, don't be a direct advocate for the climate if you can avoid it. It isn't as helpful. You are a facilitator. You are helping them have this experience with the simulator and... The second way that you do it of get yourself out of the way is to set up peers, other people in the room to speak up. Learning is a social experience. It is an experience of people often testing their own words and testing their ideas with other people and making sure that they will still be accepted by their friends if they change their mind about something. I remember distinctly at a session at MIT when a group of young conservative policy analysts were all talking about carbon pricing and En-ROADS and I was facilitating it and showing the model. And I noticed that most of the eyes were not only at the screen, they were really looking at each other. Is it okay to talk about this? It is a social experience. It matters whether you're in or out with new ideas. And so you need to create a space where people can really interact with each other well. Many times to turn people to, to each other and speak to one another. Talk to your friend. What did you think was interesting about that last scenario? Turn to the person next to you and talk for five minutes. What is the biggest insight that's come out of this session today? Turn to the person next to you and share your thoughts. People will always talk and talk and talk and have plenty to say on this overall idea. Now, the best way to get out of the way is to give them the simulator in pairs or in threes. So that both gets you out of the way. You've shown them how to run the model and test it, and you've done maybe a bunch of scenarios. But if you can somehow online or on laptops, give them the simulator. And because learning is social, in pairs or in twos or threes, then that can often be the best payoff. When you set them up to talk with each other and interact with the simulator to improve their model, mental models about how the system is going to behave over time in ways that lead to effective action. Okay, so there it is. Reflective conversation and the power of this idea of mental models and the commitment that we have to helping people use En-ROADS to improve those mental models. Some of the best ways to do it and implement this idea. One of them, have people mentally simulate to surface their top mental models and test them. Create a really fun, playful, virtual what-if world and get the heck out of the way. I hope this was helpful. Go get them. <laughs>